the Banner Bank building has 11 stories, 180,000 square feet, and at the end of the day, we really feel that it didn't cost us any more to build. To be honest with you, I was raised a strict capitalist, and I converted to sustainable design in March of 2004. I remember Gary came back from an energy conference, very excited about the possibilities of what we could do here in Boise. Initially, uh, LEED wasn't so much on the forefront. He wanted to do good design within a budget. I remember standing at the end of the table and looking at everybody and saying, you know, we've already done the schematic design, but I came back with a whole bunch of ideas. I don't know if, if it's correct to say he had an epiphany or not, but he was certainly turned on about this technology and this technology, and what about this, and can we do that? Let's talk about what we can do to make this an energy-efficient building and to become a LEED certified building. This is a story of a building, this building, the Banner Bank building in Boise, Idaho, and how a team of professionals challenged conventional thinking by designing and constructing an energy-efficient, people-friendly structure so exceptional that it earned the highest accolades from the U.S. Green Building Council, a LEED Platinum rating. This is the story of a building that proves sustainable design is good business. It not only saves energy, it saves money too. One of the most exciting things about this is we used local small engineering firms, people that had been trained at the state universities. It's not a large group, we don't have unlimited resources, but in a modest amount of time we took this from a standard building with standard technologies to where we saved 50% of our base energy, where we were able to use extensive amounts of environmentally friendly products and reach a lead platinum effort in, in Boise, Idaho. Um, so I'd like to start today with some of the energy conservation strategies. The design charrette process I've used basically for my whole architectural career. It's a way to condense the process of producing the design. You know, I've, I've sent a million meetings and, and always the money gets in the way. The challenge is not to overlook anything in the process because you bring all the key decision makers and the stakeholders and everybody who can basically bring the concept and schematic design uh, to reality. People start to feed off each other in those kinds of situations and then ideally you end up with a the, the kind of the one plus one equals five type of scenario where you get a much better solution. Well in a lot of ways it's simplified things in the, in the amount of material we have to install. Yeah. One of the points that natural capitalism taught us was that if you study things far enough and you'll come up with elegant solutions that can be more cost effective, less to build initially than standard technologies. It just seems in the last 10 years or, or, or thereabouts, the United States Green Building Council and LEED have emerged and this focus has become more and more important to do sustainable design. We found a significant savings in the steel application that we weren't expecting. Our marketing guy asked us if we could build this building without any interior columns because that was a better way for tenants to, to occupy their space. It allows a greater efficiency in getting more occupants in less space. So the structural engineer recommended castellated beams, 27 inch beams with 20 inch holes, with a whole series of 20 inch holes through them. Castellated beams are manufactured by starting with what we'll call a root beam. Then the fabricator cuts a series of slots in the beam, whether they're hexagonal or circular slots, and then offsets the two halves of the beam, effectively increasing the depth of the beam by 50%. So it's a fabrication technique which uses the same weight beam but increases its depth by 50%. We could get a longer span there. They're more expensive, but we were doing away with a bunch of columns. And uh, so from a developer standpoint, for me it was net zero. Getting the columns out of the building created these very large open floor plates with uninterrupted space for future tenant mobility around the space. As we deal with the, uh, the notion of castellated beams and holes through the beams, we can run ducts through those holes, we can run pipes through the holes, we can run conduits, etc., sprinkler pipes. And by doing that, we can reduce the floor to floor height of the building because we can take advantage of the holes through the beams. This is quite the innovative project. This is neat. 
If we hadn't done it this way, we would have had two columns over here and two columns over here, at least, as a minimum. But this is, uh, this is fantastic. So the spandrels, the horizontal sections in here, span from column to column. The number of pieces are as minimized as possible. It's all built out of a standard kit of parts. understood the LEED program, we understood there were four levels of certification and that um, if we were going to do it, we wanted to do at least a silver level. We felt that was reasonable and achievable. And we thought, you know, let's go for gold. And initially when he came back, it looks like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can get silver certification, right, 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 but what would it take to get gold? I think the LEED program is important in that it gives focus. For us, it gave us a framework to build on. I think the reclaimed water system is amazing. So originally, we were going to try to capture water off the rooftop to pick up the second water efficiency point. In Boise, we're in a desert climate. We only get 11 or 12 inches of rain a year. The building's 122 by 140. There's not too much we can do with capturing rainwater on our own roof. So what our civil engineer came up with was a plan to intercept a couple of catch basins out of the storm sewer system. From a collection system that was just going on the roof, it actually expanded out into seven acres of downtown collection area, which hadn't been done before. So that started the long system of, of developing this thing that just kept growing bigger and bigger because then we, we started decided to get the gray water out of the building as well and join the two systems. Reduce our water consumption by 70 to 80 percent. We started picking up more energy optimization points and then we we're firmly in the gold realm. And then things just became more apparent with our construction waste management and other things that fell into place. And so I called David Gibney once and one day and I said, David, humor me a little bit. What would it take to get to platinum? Which it really juiced everybody because we knew we were probably not that far away. It's not rocket science to put together a lead uh, application, but it does take, take some discipline and getting people informed from the get-go as to what their obligations are going to be. We were actually doing most of what was required and it was really more documentation and paperwork in a lot of areas. The budget actually enhanced what we could do with LEED. Gary went off on a conference and came back with all these cool ideas that he dished out at a meeting and uh, one of them was this underfloor air system for uh, the office space. going to try something that most people would never even think of, and which is where we ended up, and that's including a fan room on every floor. One thing we found was that the chillers and the air handlers were all off-the-shelf items, that we didn't have a problem finding trades that were able to work with these because they'd install these in other buildings. On the under and the underfloor people are telling us that yes, this kind of air delivery system really is going to save money in the equipment and it's going to help offset the cost of the floor and the underfloor power people are saying they can save a certain amount of money to offset the cost of the raised floor. And this is a very comfortable work environment. It's a very quiet work environment. So the underfloor air distribution not only can deliver the air, but it can also house all of our wiring and everything else getting the wiring out of the ceilings. We don't have any plugs in the or switches in the walls. All the plugs are in the floor. All the distribution is under the floor. And for the lights, everything is controlled by occupancy sensors that are mounted in the ceiling. And everything has a uh, control module on it that basically makes it a digital device, like an internet that runs through the building, only instead of controlling computers, it's controlling the lights. With it, we're able to reduce our energy use for lighting by 65% or so.
being able to use a modular system that really looks professional, is solid, has good sound qualities, is, um, is a real benefit on a long-term operating cost benefit. The energy efficiencies that we get in this core and shell project, every single tenant improvement that goes into Banner Bank is automatically qualified to earn a LEED Gold certification. It works. Everything that people said, it works. When they said that the underfloor air was going to provide comfort at lower velocity and lower energy levels, it's kind of counterintuitive, but it works. We knew we were going to submit it for platinum. Uh, we, David and Gary kept going back and forth, checking the point totals, and, and we as a, collectively as a team kept a sharp eye on where we were. I have a building that didn't cost me any more up front, and yet it's more valuable in the end. You know, the whole building was so integrated that I think it just came about very naturally that we progressed out of the gold certification class into platinum. To actually see that plaque sitting on our wall uh, when there are only less than 20 buildings maybe in the world at this point that actually have that uh, was really fantastic. <laughs> going to do sustainable design, if we're really going to get sustainable, meaning that we're consuming our own waste and generating our own electricity in, in, in a building like this, we've got to find every possible load that we can eliminate from the building. Yeah, I, I, I told him a while ago, I said I'd come up with a new level called unobtainium, where it took 76 points to get it, but there were only 75 points available, and he thought that was a good idea. Mm -hmm.